One of the rockets whose development is most followed is the Starship, the spaceship Elon Musk plans to use to ferry explorers to Mars to live there permanently. In this video, we bring you all the exciting latest updates from the most powerful rocket ever built, including how SpaceX has boosted the total thrust by a whopping 20%. One of the most ambitious projects that SpaceX is working on is Starship, a reusable launch system that can carry humans and cargo to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Starship consists of two stages the Starship spacecraft and the Super Heavy booster. Both stages are powered by Raptor engines, which are fueled by liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Raptor engines are among the most advanced rocket engines in the world, with a high thrust-to-weight ratio, a high specific impulse, and a full-flow, staged combustion cycle. SpaceX has been developing and testing different versions of the Raptor engine over the years, with the goal of increasing its performance and reliability. The current version of the Raptor engine is V2, which can generate about 230 tons of thrust at sea level and 269 tons of thrust in vacuum. V2 engines are lighter, cheaper, and more powerful than the previous V1 engines. However, SpaceX is not satisfied with the current capabilities of the Raptor engine. The company plans to upgrade the Raptor engine by 20% to reach 9,000 tons of force at sea level for the Super Heavy booster and 200 tons of payload to orbit for the Starship spacecraft. This upgrade will require improving the thrust and specific impulse of the Raptor engine, as well as reducing its mass and cost. Space SpaceX founder Elon Musk has shared some details about how SpaceX plans to achieve this upgrade on X.com, formerly known as Twitter. According to Musk, one of the ways to increase the thrust of the Raptor engine is to increase its chamber pressure. Chamber pressure is the pressure of the combustion gases inside the engine nozzle, which determines how fast and how much fuel and oxidizer are burned. Higher chamber pressure means higher thrust, but also higher stress and temperature on the engine components. The current Raptor 5.2 engine has a chamber pressure of about 350 bars or 35 megapascals, which is already very high compared to other rocket engines. However, Musk said that SpaceX is working on increasing the chamber pressure to 400 bars or 40 megapascals or even higher for future versions of the Raptor engine. Another way to increase the thrust of the Raptor engine is to optimize its nozzle design. The nozzle is the part of the engine that expands and accelerates the combustion gases to produce thrust. The design is critical because the shape and size of the nozzle affect how efficiently the gases are converted into thrust. The optimal nozzle design depends on the ambient pressure and temperature of the environment where the engine operates. For example, a sea level engine needs a smaller nozzle than a vacuum engine because the atmospheric pressure at sea level prevents the gases from expanding too much. A vacuum engine needs a larger nozzle to allow more expansion and acceleration of the gases in space. SpaceX has designed different types of nozzles for different versions of the Raptor engine. For example, Starship has three sea level or SL Raptors and three vacuum or vac raptors, each with a different nozzle size and shape. The SL raptors have a bell-shaped nozzle with an exit diameter of about 1 meter, while the VAC raptors have an annular nozzle with an exit diameter of about 2 meters. The Super Heavy booster has 33 SL raptors, with a similar nozzle design as Starship's SL raptors. Musk said that SpaceX is experimenting with different nozzle designs for future versions of the Raptor engine, such as dual bell nozzles or aerospike nozzles. A dual bell nozzle is a nozzle that has two sections, a smaller section near the throat and a larger section near the exit. A dual bell nozzle can adapt to different ambient pressures by switching between the two sections, thus improving performance and efficiency. An aerospike nozzle is a nozzle that has a spike-shaped center body surrounded by an annular gap where the gases exit. An aerospike nozzle can adjust its shape according to different ambient pressures by varying the gap size, thus achieving optimal expansion and thrust. In addition to increasing the thrust of the Raptor engine, SpaceX also plans to increase its specific impulse or ISP. ISP is a measure of how efficiently an engine uses its propellant to produce thrust. In other words, higher ISP means lower propellant consumption and longer flight duration. ISP depends on several factors, such as chamber pressure, nozzle design, propellant mixture ratio, combustion temperature, etc. SpaceX has been optimizing these factors to increase the ISP of the Raptor engine over time. For example, SpaceX has been adjusting the propellant mixture ratio between liquid methane and liquid oxygen to find the optimal balance between performance and stability. 
The current Raptor Vi2 engine has an ISP of about 330 seconds at sea level and 380 seconds in vacuum, which are already very high compared to other rocket engines. However, Musk said that SpaceX is aiming for an ISP of over 400 seconds in vacuum for future versions of the Raptor engine. To achieve this goal, SpaceX will need to increase the combustion temperature of the Raptor engine, which is the temperature of the gases inside the chamber. Higher combustion temperature means higher energy and higher ISP, but also a higher risk of melting or cracking the engine components. The current Raptor Vi2 engine has a combustion temperature of about 3,500 K or 3,227 degrees Celsius, which is already very hot compared to other rocket engines. However, Musk said that SpaceX is working on increasing the combustion temperature to over 4,000 K or 3,727 degrees Celsius or even higher for future versions of the Raptor engine. SpaceX cannot achieve this goal without improving the cooling system of the Raptor engine, which is the system that prevents the engine from overheating and damaging itself. The cooling system consists of several parts, such as the regenerative cooling channels, the film cooling injectors, and the transpiration cooling pores. The regenerative cooling channels are tubes that run along the walls of the chamber and nozzle where the cold propellant flows through and absorbs the heat from the hot gases. The film cooling injectors are holes that spray a thin layer of propellant along the walls of the chamber and nozzle, where it vaporizes and forms a protective film that shields the walls from the hot gases. The transpiration cooling pores are tiny holes that allow a small amount of propellant to seep through and cool the walls from within. SpaceX has been developing and testing different cooling systems for different versions of the Raptor engine over the years, with the goal of increasing their effectiveness and reliability. The current Raptor Vi2 engine uses a combination of regenerative cooling, film cooling, and transpiration cooling to keep its temperature under control. However, Musk said that SpaceX is working on improving the cooling system for future versions of the Raptor engine, such as using more advanced materials, increasing the flow rate and pressure of the propellant, and optimizing the distribution and size of the cooling channels, injectors, and pores. SpaceX also plans to reduce the mass and cost of the Raptor engine, which are important factors for achieving full and rapid reusability of Starship and Super Heavy. Lower mass means lower gravity losses and higher payload capacity. Lower cost means lower launch prices and higher profitability. Mass and cost depend on several factors such as materials, manufacturing, testing, maintenance, etc. SpaceX has been reducing the mass and cost of the Raptor engine over time by using lighter and cheaper materials, simplifying and streamlining its design and manufacturing process, increasing its production rate and quality control, and minimizing its testing and maintenance requirements. The current Raptor Vi2 engine has a mass of about 1,600 kilograms and a cost of about $250,000 per ton of thrust. However, Musk said that SpaceX X is aiming for a mass of less than 1,000 kilograms and a cost of less than $100,000 per ton of thrust for future versions of the Raptor engine. To achieve this goal, SpaceX will need to continue to innovate and improve its materials, manufacturing, testing, and maintenance methods for the Raptor engine, such as using more advanced alloys, composites, or ceramics, using more automated and efficient machines, tools, or robots, using more rigorous and reliable testing protocols, and using more modular and interchangeable components. SpaceX's plan to upgrade the Raptor engine by 20% is a bold and ambitious one, but also a necessary one for achieving its vision of making humanity a multi-planetary species. By increasing its thrust, specific impulse, and payload capacity, reducing its mass and cost, and improving its performance and reliability, SpaceX will be able to launch more Starship missions to orbit the Moon, Mars, and beyond with full and rapid reusability. Meanwhile, have you seen the latest photos of the Starship Booster? They are nothing but gorgeous. The first photo gives us a bird's-eye view of Booster 9, which is the largest and most powerful rocket stage ever built. You can see the grid fins at the top, which will help steer the booster back to Earth after launch. The grid fins are also coated with a special material that can withstand extreme heat and pressure. The second photo zooms in on the flames generated by the Raptor engines, which are the most advanced rocket engines in the world. They use liquid methane and liquid oxygen as propellants, which are more efficient and environmentally friendly than traditional fuels. The Raptor engines can also throttle and gimbal, which means they can adjust their thrust and direction to optimize
optimize performance and maneuverability. The third photo shows us the frosty body of Booster 9, which is caused by the super cold propellants inside. The booster has a diameter of 9 meters or 30 feet and a height of 70 meters or 230 feet, making it taller than the Statue of Liberty. The booster can carry up to 100 metric tons or 220,000 pounds of payload to low Earth orbit, or about 20 times more than the Falcon 9 rocket. The fourth photo gives us a wide-angle view of the test site, which is located at SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas. You can see the huge cloud of dust and exhaust that was created by the static fire test, which lasted for about three seconds. The test was a crucial step to verify the readiness of Booster 9 for its upcoming launch with Ship 25, the Starship Upper Stage prototype. These photos are not only visually stunning, but also scientifically and historically significant. They demonstrate the incredible progress that SpaceX has made in developing its Starship system, which aims to revolutionize space travel and colonization. Starship is designed to be fully reusable, refuelable, and capable of carrying humans and cargo to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The next milestone for SpaceX is to launch Booster 9 and Ship 25 together for the first time in a test flight that will send them around Earth and splash down near Hawaii. This will be a spectacular sight to behold, and a major step toward achieving Musk's vision of making humanity a multi-planetary species. Now, when you are launching a spaceship as powerful as the Starship, safety is of utmost importance because accidents could be fatal. This is where SpaceX's Mega Steel Pancake comes in. The feature is a new and innovative water deluge system that aims to protect the Starship launch vehicle and its launch infrastructure from the immense heat and force generated by its powerful engines. The Starship launch vehicle is composed of two stages. The Starship Upper Stage, which is designed to carry people and cargo to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, and the Super Heavy Booster, which is needed to propel the Starship into orbit. The Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptor engines at its base, which are capable of producing a thrust of over 72,000 kilonewtons, or 16 million pounds force, at liftoff. This is equivalent to the thrust of about 15 Saturn V rockets, the most powerful rocket ever flown. The enormous amount of thrust generated by the Super Heavy Booster creates a lot of heat and pressure, which can damage the launch pad and the orbital launch mount, the structure that holds the Starship in place before liftoff. During the first orbital flight test of Starship in April 2023, the Super Heavy Booster's engines cratered the launch pad and sent chunks of concrete flying around, damaging the orbital launch mount and other nearby equipment. To prevent such damage from happening again, SpaceX has developed a new water deluge system that sits directly underneath the rocket and sprays huge amounts of water upward and around it. The water deluge system is also known as the Mega Steel Pancake feature because it consists of a very thick, perforated steel plate that resembles an upside-down shower head. The steel plate has hundreds of holes that allow water to flow through it at high pressure. The water comes from a large tank that is connected to several pumps and pipes. The function of the water deluge system is to cool down the rocket and the launch infrastructure, as well as to dampen the sound and shock waves produced by the rocket's engines. The water absorbs some of the heat and energy from the rocket's exhaust plume, reducing the temperature and pressure on the launch pad and the orbital launch mount. The water also creates a barrier between the rocket and the surrounding air, which reduces the noise and vibration levels. The water deluge system can also help extinguish any fires that may occur during or after liftoff. The water deluge system was tested for the first time in July 2023 at SpaceX's Starbase site in South Texas. Musk posted several videos of the test on social media, showing the impressive sight of massive fountains of water shooting up toward and around the orbital launch mount. Musk said that the new water deluge system would protect against the immense heat and force of Starship launch. The water deluge system is a major step toward making the launch infrastructure ready for future Starship missions. SpaceX is currently preparing for the second orbital flight test of Starship, which will involve launching a fully stacked Starship with a super heavy booster from Starbase to an altitude of about 400 kilometers or 250 miles, then landing both stages back on Earth. However, SpaceX might end up in hot water with the authorities thanks to the effect this water deluge system can have on the environment. How does it affect the environment? The water used for the flame deflector system may contain pollutants such as metals, salts, and chemicals from the rocket fuel and the launch pad. The water may also become acidic or alkaline due to the reaction with the exhaust gases. The runoff from the system may enter the nearby wetlands, bays, and the Gulf of Mexico, where it could harm wildlife and plants. What are the regulations? According to CNBC, SpaceX failed to apply for the Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit, which is required for any facility that discharges pollutants into the waters of the state. The permit sets limits on the amount and type of pollutants that can be discharged, as well as monitoring and reporting requirements. The permit also ensures that the facility complies with the Federal Clean Water Act and other state 
laws. What are the consequences? If SpaceX violated any environmental laws or regulations, it could face fines, penalties, or lawsuits from the Environmental Protection Agency, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or other agencies or groups too. It could also damage its reputation and public trust, as well as its relationship with NASA and other partners. Moreover, it could harm the ecosystems and biodiversity around its launch site, which could have long-term effects on the environment and human health. However, SpaceX still needs to obtain regulatory approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, which grounded Starship after the first test resulted in an explosion in mid-air. It is a known fact that not every test flight goes as planned. On April 20, 2023, SpaceX launched its first fully integrated Starship rocket, consisting of a super-heavy booster and a Starship upper stage. The mission was intended to demonstrate the performance of the Starship system in orbit, with a planned splashdown near Hawaii. Unfortunately, the flight ended prematurely when the two stages failed to separate, and SpaceX triggered a self-destruct command, resulting in a spectacular explosion high above the Gulf of Mexico. The mishap also caused significant damage to the Starbase launch pad, creating a large crater and scattering debris over a wide area. SpaceX quickly initiated an investigation into the cause of the failure under the oversight of the FAA, which is responsible for ensuring public safety during commercial launch operations. After nearly four months of analysis, SpaceX has finally submitted its final mishap investigation report to the FAA, marking an important step toward resuming Starship test flights. The report contains detailed information about what went wrong during the April 20th launch, as well as the corrective actions that SpaceX has taken or plans to take to prevent similar incidents in the future. The FAA is currently reviewing the report and will determine whether SpaceX has adequately addressed the issues that led to the mishap. The agency will also consider public safety, national security, and foreign policy implications before approving SpaceX's report and authorizing the company to launch Starship again. SpaceX is eager to resume its Starship testing program as it has big plans for the rocket system. The company hopes to send Starship on its first orbital flight around Earth later this year, followed by a lunar flyby in 2024. SpaceX also has contracts with NASA to use Starship for landing astronauts on the moon as part of the Artemis program and with several private customers for orbital tourism and interplanetary exploration missions. Musk has repeatedly claimed that Starship is the key to making humanity a multi-planetary species and that he envisions building a city on Mars in the next few decades. To achieve these bold goals, SpaceX needs to prove that Starship can fly reliably and safely in various environments and scenarios. The submission of the mishap investigation report is a sign of progress and transparency from SpaceX as it shows that the company is willing to learn from its mistakes and improve its design and operations. It also demonstrates SpaceX's commitment to working with the FAA and other stakeholders to ensure compliance with regulations and standards. SpaceX fans and enthusiasts are eagerly awaiting the outcome of the FAA's review, hoping that it will clear the way for more Starship test flights in the near future. The next launch attempt will involve a new version of the Super Heavy Booster and a Starship upper stage with upgraded engines and features. The test flight will aim to achieve orbit and splashdown successfully, showcasing Starship's capabilities and potential. However, any delays in the development of the Starship can have serious consequences for NASA's Artemis III mission. Artemis III is NASA's ambitious plan to land the first woman and the first person of color on the lunar surface by 2024. The mission will use NASA's Orion spacecraft and the SLS rocket, as well as a Lunar Gateway Station and a Human Landing System, or HLS. How is SpaceX involved? SpaceX won a $2.9 billion contract from NASA to provide the HLS using its Starship vehicle. The Starship will launch from Earth on top of the Super Heavy booster, then dock with the Orion at the Gateway, and then land on the Moon with two astronauts. The Starship will also serve as the ascent vehicle to return the astronauts to the Orion. The delays in Starship development could jeopardize NASA's timeline for the lunar landing, which is already tight and dependent on many factors such as funding, technical readiness, and political support. If SpaceX cannot demonstrate a reliable and safe Starship HLS by 2024, NASA may have to look for alternative options or postpone the mission. This could also affect NASA's long-term vision of establishing a sustainable presence on the Moon and preparing for a human mission to Mars. 